As your session gets more complex, you'll find that it helps to consolidate multiple tracks into one track. And this makes it easier to control the mix, and it also allows you to add processing to groups of tracks as a whole. For example, you may have multiple drum and percussion tracks that you want to compress together, or perhaps there are multiple instrument tracks that you want to EQ together. So let's see how this works. In this session, let's apply those previous examples by combining the drum tracks here and the shaker track together to an auxiliary input track, and then we'll add some compression on them. And then we will do the same for uh, these two tracks down here for the pad and for the arpeggiator. We'll combine those together in, in another auxiliary input and put EQ on it. So to do this, what we're going to do is first go up to Track, choose New, and we are going to go Stereo, Auxiliary Input, and choose Create. I'm going to click and drag this track right to the bottom of the drums and percussion track. And you may be wondering what makes an auxiliary input different from any other track. One thing to notice is that an auxiliary input does not have a record enable button. So you cannot record MIDI or audio on this track. It is also different in that it constantly passes through any audio that is routed into its input. And that is what makes auxiliary inputs perfect for this scenario. Now, what we're going to want to do is choose an input bus for this auxiliary input. So if we click on the input and go to bus, I'm going to choose the first one available, which is bus 1 and 2. And to avoid things getting confusing, I'm going to also rename it. So if we right-click on the bus, we can say rename. And we're going to call this drums and percussion. And I'm also going to rename the auxiliary input, drums and percussion. And now what we're going to need to do is to assign the output of all of these tracks to the input of this auxiliary input. So we could go through each track one at a time and assign it, but there's actually a fast way to do that. And so the way I do that is I will select all the tracks that I want to change the output to. And I'll do that by clicking the top track that I need to change the output to and holding down Shift and clicking the last track, which will select all of the tracks in between. And then I am going to, on a Mac, hold down Option Shift. On a PC, this would be holding down Alt Shift. And click on the output, and I'm going to choose that bus. So drums and percussion. And you'll see it change the outputs of all of these tracks. So now the outputs of all of these tracks are going to go into the input of this one track. Now there's one more step we need to take. You'll see at this point, if I hit play, You see I have control of all the drums with this fader here on the track, but what happens is if we try to solo any of these tracks, like if I try to solo the kick drum, you'll notice I don't hear anything. And the reason why is because when you solo a track in Pro Tools, it will mute all of the other tracks, and that's also including the auxiliary input. So one thing you could do is solo then the auxiliary input every time you do that, but that would become very tedious every time you wanted to solo something. So Pro Tools has a mode known as Solo Save, and on a Mac, if you hold down Command and click on Solo, and this would be on a PC holding down Control and clicking on the Solo button, it will gray it out, putting that track into Solo Safe mode. So now that you can see as I solo a track, this track does not mute anymore. So now as I hit play, I can hear the kick drum. So we should be set now to go with, with this auxiliary input set with the drum. So now if I wanted to process all of these together, I could now go ahead and um, choose a compressor. So I will just grab the standard Dynamic 3 compressor that comes with Pro Tools. I'm just going to put this at a 3 to 1 ratio. And just set a threshold where I see just about 3 dB of gain reduction. 
I want a slower attack, which 10 milliseconds is pretty good, and I want a faster release. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. So this plugin here on the insert section of the auxiliary input is now being applied to all of these tracks together as a whole. So let's go ahead and create another auxiliary input. And this time, we will put the pad in the arpeggiator through that auxiliary input. Now, another way, if you're on Pro Tools 11 or later, a quick way to add an auxiliary input, if you're on a Mac, you can hold down Control and double click in a blank area in the edit window or in the mix window, and it'll create a stereo auxiliary input. Um, on a PC, that would be holding down Start and double-clicking. And what we're going to do is go ahead and assign a bus for the input. I'm going to rename it. Pad and ARP for Arpeggiator. And I will name this bus the same. Okay, and I'm going to solo save this auxiliary input. And then these two tracks, so I'm holding down Shift as I click the next track next to it. Holding down Option Shift, changing the output to Pad and ARP. And now as we play, sure enough, we have that control over these two instruments. So now our mix has become much more simplified out of these tracks because now I've got control of all the drums and percussion with this fader. I have the bass here and then I have all of my other pads and arpeggiator on this fader over here. So these three faders right now can control all of the instruments that I have. Now I'm also going to process these two tracks with an EQ. So I'm going to insert the EQ37 band and I'm just going to roll off the lows on this so that they don't interfere with the bass frequencies. And I am just going to brighten the sound up a little bit too on this. So All right, now in the next video, I will show you how to use auxiliary inputs to create effects, sends, and returns.